Hallelujah. So I have a testimony. So I have been going through some challenges with my neck and a lot of pain. And it's worse when I'm up here singing. So just been standing on God's word, praying in the spirit, believing God. So if you guys have not made the sacrifice to come to Bible study, I admonish you to come. It is worth the sacrifice to come to Bible study. So pastor has been teaching on first and second Peter. He's on second Peter now. I'm still on second Peter. What a blessing. So I'm sitting in Bible study and Holy Spirit says, ask your pastor to anoint your neck. Get in agreement with you. And pastor anointed my neck prayed in agreement with me the prayer of faith the word of faith and this is the best my neck has felt in months i've been Praise going to god. a chiropractor hallelujah glory to god <laughs> trying to get the just right Amen. but the prayer of faith and see Praise the anointing god. that is on your pastor you might be thinking that you're coming for bible study but god has a way of meeting you where you are he knows Amen. what you need even before you ask, you know, I, on Sunday, every Sunday, I would forget because, you know, after I sing and sit down, it's not hurting anymore. OK, but Wednesday, when I made the sacrifice, when I made the push and I heard the Lord's voice say, ask your pastor to anoint your neck. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise and God. And so, okay, the neck is better. So now the attack on my eyes, praise the Lord. Well, I asked my husband to, to pray for my eyes and hallelujah. Hallelujah. That itching has stopped. Praise the God. pain has stopped. Amen. God is faithful. But Glory there's only one way to get to God. Amen. <laughs> and that way is through Jesus. The only way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to so God. So faithful. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah 
today, I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Romans. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Blessings to you all in Jesus' name. Romans. Amen. Hallelujah. And as we go to the word this morning, we just thank God that the word is of power to Bring itself to pass. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. You know, I'm not even 100% sure. Amen. There's so many places I could start this morning. So we're going to pick a word and we're going to launch into this today because I believe God wants to bless our lives. Matter of fact, I know he does. Amen. 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 I believe God wants to build us. Someone said earlier as we began to praise and, and doing praise and worship. And, you know, God wants to have us go out better than when we came in. And now's a good time for us to get together and agree in faith to that end in Jesus' name. So let's pray. Lord, as we open our hearts to receive your word, Psalms 119, 118 says, Lord, that as we ask God, we ask you to speak wondrous truth from your word into our lives today. We pray, God, that by the illumination of the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, that you would give us understanding, that you would give us application, and that your word would produce in us an eternal hope. And for it, God, we give you the praise right now. We take authority over any hindering spirit, any work of the adversary that would seek to keep us from hearing, receiving, and applying And I pray, God, that you would speak through this vessel in a clear way. And God, as I yield myself, I ask you to be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Romans chapter 15. 
and we'll read verses 4 and 5. Romans 15, verses 4 and 5. It says there, amen, before anyone need a word, need a, need a Bible, amen, before we begin to read, let's read. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Jesus Christ Jesus. Let's read verse 4 again. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now let's read verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. I want to call today how to have hope in trying times. Amen. How to have hope in trying times. You know, because, you know, when we look around today, as you observe some of the things that are happening in the world that, you know, somebody might even say last week's word might have been something a little heavy. Amen. But when you look at the state of the world that we're in today, a lot, a lot of people through not interpreting what they see, uh, maybe in a way in light of the scriptures. Amen. A lot of people depressed. A lot of people feel pressure. Amen. There is a lot happening around us today. Amen. We hear on a daily basis reports of rage and reports of violence and and people's inhumanity toward their fellow human beings. And then there's the daily pressure you have to deal with, just the pressures of living life. Even you and I as believers sometimes can wrestle with the issue of hope. Paul begins to open the word of God for us, and we'll look at this both today and I know on next week as well, because there are too many around us. And actually, you know, even in the house of God, amen, matter of fact, even in the pulpits of God, you know, where I heard of someone, another mega pastor gave up, left. Amen. Why? Because of a loss of hope. You know, we in the ministry, we're not absent from it as well. Amen. You know, nor are you. You know, we're in times right now that would try us. Amen. And except for the grace of God to keep us. You know, we could easily find ourselves falling where so many have in the area of lost hope. God has a word for us concerning how to have hope in trying times. I don't know about you, but I'll, can you agree these are trying times? Man, we're being tested, squeezed, um, pressed, turned um, in ways that we never could have anticipated just a few years ago. But if we'll keep the right outlook in those times, and as we begin to see in the word of God, one of the first things that the apostle said that the things that are written before time or before we arrived were written for our learning so that you and I could have hope. God does not want you us to begin to lose hope in these last of the last days. Amen. And uh, so this is what we want to look at because, you know, hope can be tested. Hope can be tried. And, um, and sometimes if we don't keep our eyes on the right things, you know, we can find ourselves at a loss. Amen. First question I want to ask is, why do we need hope? And a lot of people can't really rightly identify hope. But I'll be blunt and say, brothers and sisters, you can't live without hope. You know, why do you say that, Pastor? Because hopelessness leads to depression. Hopelessness is one of the root causes of, causes of drug abuse, one of the causes of rage that we see all around us right now. You know, it leads to suicide, depression. And some actually give up and take their lives, amen. You know, and so when you begin to look at this issue, yeah, you and I can be touched by the things that come against us to try and drain away our hope. You know, people can live about 40 days without food. Amen. You know, you can. You say, Pastor, I don't see how I can do that. But without eating, you can go about 40 days, but you can only go about four days without water. You can only go about four minutes without air. Amen. And you can't last very long at all if you have no hope. You know, the Bible says concerning hope that hope deferred make it the heart sick. The loss of hope is also an indicator. It's an open door to certain types of oppressions and diseases that can come our way. And so 
Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And if we become sick in heart, even the believer can despair, amen, and give up, you know, the, because of the pressures that come against our lives, in, in particularly in these days that uh, we find ourselves in. So I really believe that one of the greatest things that we have need of in this day is to learn how to build our hope. This is why we call this how to have hope in trying times. Amen. You know, and and as we go forward, as we approach the coming of the Lord Jesus, some of the times that are around us as we rub shoulders with the world might become more trying as it pertains to the flesh. But when we get full of the word of God, as we begin to see that we've been given the comfort of the scriptures for the sake of hope, even as we see ourselves approaching that day, amen, we can still keep our hope intact, looking for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So what's hope, Pastor? Amen. We want to look at this just for a moment. Amen. If you would go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Amen. Very famous scripture. You know, we, uh, we you know, uh, those of us who uh, read and study the word of God, amen, it's Probably know, know that scripture by faith. Amen. If not, it's a good one to get in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it says there, now faith. Somebody said, now, now faith. Amen. And we know that faith is simply that belief, that trust, that reliance on God. Amen. We know that faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. But what we don't hook up too often is that if you, uh, are de if you have a deficit in, in the area of your hope, your faith has nothing to work with. Maybe this is a reason why sometimes we pray seemingly in faith, but we don't really expect the prayer to be answered. Amen. See, one cannot work without the other. If I pray in faith and I ask you, did you receive what you prayed for? Well, I'm hoping. Amen. See, you didn't pray in faith. Amen. See, there's a, a worldly hope that is, I, I, just, I just hope that things will work out all right. That's not biblical hope. And we're going to define biblical hope in just a little bit. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Amen. You know, and, and what do you mean when you see this? Well, hope is the evidence. It's the assurance. It's the conviction of, of that's in my heart that the thing I'm asking God for is that I have it when I ask. The Bible says whatsoever things we pray, if we believe we receive it, we shall receive it. The believing is in I believe it before I pray. I pray in faith, believing my hope looks favorably with an expectation of receiving it. In other words, hope is a favorable expectation. It's an expectation that the thing, the substance, amen, uh, that I'm praying to God for, I have the internal evidence on the inside through the testimony of his word that I'll receive the thing that I expect when I pray. See, that's the difference, amen. And so if I believe in what I receive when I pray, from that point I can shift into thanking God that I have received even as I asked. But it's all based on hope, amen. See, that's one of the power triplets um, in 1 Corinthians 13. It says, now bad at these three faith. Amen. Praise God. We parked on faith. Praise God. We don't develop strong faith and praise God. We want to master our love walk. But it says without hope, these three faith, hope and love. And so right along with our faith and right along with the love of God, we need to develop our expectation. Amen. So faith then is the. Substance, amen. One translation says, gives reality for the thing expected. Amen. Notice what else the apostle says. It's the evidence of things not seen. The evidence, amen, the proof, the title deed. Often when we talk about this, I always like to use the illustration of a car. Amen. If I were you praying for a car and I say I got a car for you, amen, you don't have to see it before you rejoice over it, do you? All I have to do to settle the issue with you once and for all in advance of you seeing it, advance of you smell, smelling the new leather, amen, and sitting in that cool air, amen. If I show you the title and I'm writing your name on it, what will you do? You're going to rejoice, amen, amen. And now you're hoping to actually get in it in advance of before you even touch it because your hope 
is stirred. It's not faith when you get it. Amen. Faith brings in the reality the thing that you have an expectation to receive. In other words, if you sit in church and you say, well, I'm not going to receive anything today. You don't hope to, you won't. Amen. But if your attitude is, man, today I will learn wondrous truths from the word of God, irregardless of who's speaking it. There's something in here for me. I'm going to receive it. Guess what? You're going to receive in Jesus name because you have an expectation to receive. Hope is a favorable expectation. If you expect a man, when I read the Bible, I don't get nothing out of it. You won't get nothing out of it. Why? Because there's no expectation there. Amen. I believe I receive and if I don't see a tangible benefit at the moment I read it because it's going in me. See, we need to work on this area of our hope and the world around us is trying to take away that hope. Amen. Because if you don't have hope, you don't have a favorable uh, expectation that things will actually get better on a personal level. Amen. Uh, sometimes people don't believe, believe there's an expectation of their circumstances changing. In other words, they lose hope. It's always been this way. No, no, it, it hadn't been that way always. Amen. And it doesn't have to stay that way. Amen. That's why there's so much in the world that, in the word of God, that uh, encourages us to have hope. David said at one time, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Hope thou in God. Have an expectation that God can work things out for you. Believe that God can move in your behalf. See, that's in the area of our hope. Amen. And that's why if it's deferred, our hearts can become sick. And when we approach the trans of life, and we all have them. Amen. If you hadn't had them, you will. Amen. Because Jesus said in the world, you'll have tribulation. Amen. The ellipsis, it means pressure. How many of y'all never experienced any pressure? You know, the pressures of life don't wait till you're an adult. Amen? They don't wait until you're full grown. Amen? There's pressure all around us right now, seeking to mold us into a certain image, to get us to back up on the truth of the word of God, to get us to compromise. There are pressures against us that come, um, and some of them shake like financial pressure. Amen? Some of it could be relational pressure. Some of it is just spiritual pressure of the enemy, Seeking to uh, handicap our walk with Jesus. Amen. Jesus said in the world, we're going to have pressure. But he also said, be of good cheer. Amen. I've overcome the world. So there's a way, beloved, for you and I to go to the word of God and begin to draw hope from it. Amen. And uh, as we begin, if you go a little forward, we in, in Hebrews, go to 1 Peter. <clears throat> 1 Peter, amen, chapter 1. And look at verses 3, amen, uh, verse 5. You know, the Bible has a lot more to say about this issue of hope than, you know, you would first think before you actually begin to search it out. Verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. You know, being born again ought to produce in us a hope. See, sometimes we can actually take where our salvation is taking us for granted. And we can get a little boggled down on what we rub shoulders with in the daily course of living. Amen. Now, hope is a favorable expectation. You believe that things are going to work out for you. As a matter of fact, all things work how? Together for the good of those that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. See, that's, that should produce in you and I a hope. Amen. Don't judge me by where I am now. I know I'm going somewhere else. I'm not going to stay parked in this forever. I have a hope and expectation that things will turn in Jesus name. See, when people lose that hope, that's when they give up. And a lot of people are giving up and God has given us a means through his word to encourage people to hold on. Don't toss in the tower yet. Amen. You know, there are better things, better days ahead in Jesus name. Amen. We've been born again. And that produces in us, Peter said, a living or a lively hope. Amen. But he said it's through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. So just knowing that you're saved can produce in you an expectation. Number one expectation is, is that the sum total of my life 
is not based on what I experience here on earth. I'm born again and my eternal destiny is somewhere other than right here. I'm going to be with Jesus. Amen. See, I have been begotten. That term begotten, amen, just like God gave his only begotten son. It means to be birthed into. And I have a living hope because I expect to see Jesus. Y'all do a little bit better than that. Can I get another amen? Got one. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You're born again to a living hope. You should have an expectation. Now, why should you have an expectation? Look at the next verse. Because this hope that is in us is taking you and I somewhere. Because he has been raised, 1 Corinthians 15 tells me that I'll be raised. Amen. See, my hope goes beyond this life. Amen. When at the end of this physical life, when this physical body is laid at rest, amen, I'll still be living, but I won't be here. Verse 4 says where I'm going, to an inheritance. See, there's something that, that is set aside for me, to an inheritance and for you, by the way. There's an inheritance incorruptible. When I was born again, I'm born into an inheritance, amen. Matter of fact, I became an heir, amen. An heir is someone who is also a party to the blessings of the person granting an inheritance, amen. The Bible says you and I are heirs with who? God. And we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So you and I are going to receive an inheritance. And then he goes on to define the nature of that inheritance because it's an incorruptible. Say incorruptible. Amen. It can't be messed up. It will not rot. What I received through the new birth, amen, and where I'm going to receive it in Christ Jesus, amen, where I'll be, nothing can corrupt that. It's eternal. Amen. Notice it says it is undefiled. Amen. It can't be messed up or, you know, and, and when we get, get this hope in you and I, saints, nothing can stifle us in a way unless we stumble into sin. Amen. Amen. And we get bogged down by worry and we get overcome by fear. Amen. See, those things can cause us to lose sight of the inheritance that you and I have in Christ Jesus. Amen. Matter of fact, most believers aren't, aren't really excited about going to be with him. Amen. See, the Bible we're going to read later says through the patience and comfort of scriptures, we might have hope. But the scriptures tell, let us know that this part of our life is not the best part of our life. This is like preparatory. We're getting ready to go somewhere. Either by age, amen, or by rapture, we have an inheritance that we're about to enter into. And the nature of it is that it is incorruptible, is undefiled, and it faded not away. You know, Paul is thinking here about the crowns that, you know, those in the races would receive, amen. Uh, and they would race and train and labor to receive um, a wreath, a corruptible crown, but ours is incorruptible. It does not fade away. And that word there in the Greek for faded not away the term is perpetual, it's ongoing. And so we have things that we received in Christ Jesus that began at the new birth, but they will last forever. Amen. And things will get better and better and better. We used to sing a song every day with Jesus. It's sweeter than the day before. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have to remind ourselves if you're going to keep your hope up, not to get bogged down in what you see and what you rub shoulders with on a daily basis. We got to look beyond what we experience and look to who has delivered us and saved us. See, that's the living hope on the inside of you and I that can sustain us when we run into opposition, when we run into calamity, that can help us to overcome when, we, when adversity is all around us and tribulation or tellipsis or pressures seek to squish you and I. Amen. It's this living hope in the inside of us that carries us through it. See, it's the faith to know that I am going somewhere in Christ Jesus and nothing, no principality, no power, nothing present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, depth, nor any living creature can separate me from the love of God and the inheritance I have in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so my hope is stirred. My expectations grow because I know in whom I believe. Amen. See, so you need to have an expectation. I'm going to depart from uh, my, uh, my general way of thinking right now, you got to have an expectation that your life can improve and get better. Amen. See, man, it's all, they don't have to always be as it is. 
See, our expectations, amen, need to be risen, amen, not based on what we see happening in the world, but based on the object of our hope, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Amen. See, we build on things that are eternal. Amen. And so we're not simply living for this temporary world. I'm living in light of the inheritance I receive in Christ Jesus. Verse 5 says, uh, verse 4, the last part of this verse, verse says, not only is it unfading, it's reserved. You know, when you got born again and uh, that lively hope that came in you when you got saved, yeah, that's the moment you punched your reservation. <laughs> Amen. Notice he uses the term who are kept by, amen, to an inheritance that faded not away, reserved. Somebody say reserved. Yeah. Amen. You got a place waiting, a spot. Amen. Oh, you don't have to run around looking for a seat. You have a place reserved in eternity. See, that's part of my inheritance. Amen. And so I'm on the way to that reserved place. Now, what did Jesus say? Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place. See, you got reservation to the marriage supper. Amen. And we're, we're in the process as, the, as this people making ourselves ready in Jesus' name. So I have something to look forward to, and you do too. Amen. That's beyond this that we see on a daily basis. If you're going to keep your hope up, amen? If you're going to have hope in trying times, you got to have a clear view of where you're going and what that lies in store, what is reserved for me as a believer. Praise God, amen. You know, in Hebrews chapter 12, it says, man, when I leave here, I'm going to go and be with an innumerable, innumerable company of believers. I'm going to go, amen, through um, that process of being with Jesus, amen. Going to be ushered into glory by the angels of God, amen. Mm. Man, amen. There's a lot in store, amen, that we, even though we're here, need to keep our eye on so we don't despair. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, if in this life only we had hope, we are of all men most miserable. So your hope can't be on the next election cycle. Amen. Your hope can't be in a particular number, letter, designation of a party, amen, or a person. Our hope has to be in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our hope is in knowing that, yes, this is a temporary situation. It's subject to change in Jesus' name. And God is able to change situations and circumstances for the benefit of you and I, his people. Amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. And it's reserved in heaven for me. Somebody say for me. Amen. He said for you, but you can make it personal. Amen. God has some things reserved for you. And, and notice, uh, going to the next verse, who are kept by the power of God. So you need to know who's keeping you if you're going to have hope. You know, if you ever feel like, man, you're really not developing, will I make it? You know, the Bible says, faithful is he that called you who also will do it. Amen. And that he, he who began a what? A good work in you. Philippians 1, 6, we'll perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, amen. A source of hope for me is when I bumble, when I stumble, amen. You know, we're broken vessels, yeah. But when I blow it and I mess up, I know God knows he expects me to get up and do better. Amen. See, the good work he's begun in me, he has an expectation that I'll go all the way with it. Well, we need to get in agreement with God, amen. Amen. He will carry me all the way, and that's my expectation. So I'm not going to get bogged down. But, Pastor, what if I give in to fear? God didn't give me the spirit of fear. Amen? Or what if I, I, I bumble and I mess up and I stumble into sin? He gave me a remedy. First John 1, 9, repent, get right with God and roll on. But don't get bogged down in the daily grind of life. We got to keep our hope strong. Amen? He's taken us to a place where he is. Amen. So the hope we're talking about here, beloved, is not a worldly hope. The hope for our times is not as the world gives. That's a hope that goes around election cycles and the like, that goes around who we can get in office. No, that's not the hope that, that we trust. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Not a worldly hope, amen, but a biblical hope, as I said earlier. And what a biblical hope is, it is a settled assurance that God will do what God has promised he would do. Amen. That God will take the thing that you believe and trust him for, and he'll bring it into manifestation that God has more faith in you and I than we do. Amen. John, about if we're going to have hope in trying times, you got to know that God is believing to carry you all the way through. Amen. Amen. I believe the Lord's word to us today, saints, don't, don't quit. Don't give up. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know who I may be talking about. Don't toss in the towel. Amen. It's not over. Amen. God will carry you all the way through. Amen. But you got to keep your expectation up. Don't despair in Jesus' name. Amen. Not a worldly hope. Somebody asked me one time, you know, because I, I do a lot of research, I, I do a lot of looking at different trends that are coming, you know, uh, kind of figure my stuff to be like a watchman on a wall so I can see what's coming and warn. Somebody asked me one time, how do you keep yourself up? Amen. Well, one way I keep myself up is based on some things that I know. Amen. Amen. I know where I'm headed. Amen. Praise God. I know we have to go through this to get to there. Amen. You know, it's like Christmas. I got to go through Thanksgiving to get there. And to get the resurrection, I got to go through the spring. Amen. You know, in other words, where I'm going means I've got to go through some things to arrive at that final destination. And so I'm set my affections. I'll set my affections on where I'm headed. So that in the middle of the things that are coming, I can see beyond those to a different time and season. See, that's the expectation you and I need to have. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I know what the word says about the last days that the Bible says it to be perilous, what it says about the general mindset of people. But I also know concerning the last days, Jesus said, when, I, when you see those things, do what with your head? Look up. Amen. See, that's an expectation. That's hope. Our redemption draws now. I, I keep my expectation up. Why? Because I, I know how the story ends. Amen. Hallelujah. And so in order to get to be with Jesus, amen, through the rapture, amen, when he catches us away as his bride, amen, um, or when we return with Jesus, amen, at the world of Armageddon, or uh, when we go into the final state of eternity, be with Jesus, amen, on a new heaven and earth. We know how it ends. In the end, Satan is defeated forever. Amen. amen. Jesus walks into, he's going to rule this earth for a thousand years, and you and I who are believers are going to reign with him, amen, uh, during that thousand year millennia, and we'll go into eternity, the eternal state with Jesus. See, we know how it ends, amen. I know the one that's been harassing me and trying to destroy me and to steal, kill, and destroy out of my life. I know that his day is coming. And so I can look beyond my present day to a, and Isaiah 14 says, look, they'll look on thee, and say, is this the man that troubled the nations? And we'll see him cast into a lake of fire. Amen. See, I, we know how it ends. Amen. And so I'm willing to go to, through these things, amen, because I know how it turns out in the end that the adversary of our souls will be dealt with. Amen. Righteousness will reign in heaven and on earth. Amen. And in the end, all of God's will for mankind, including you and I, is going to be established right here. And we'll be partakers together on a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. So I, I'm not going to get down. See, you have to remind yourself of those things, though. See, you got to keep in remembrance, he's going to say later. Amen. If you're going to keep your hope, and if you and I as fellow believers are going to stay hopeful, we got to put one another in man as well. He tells us to admonish one another, getting a little ahead of myself, but we're encouraged to remind one another. Don't let the sum total of your life get caught up in what you experience right now. There's a better expectation ahead for you and I. And so we have to build that sense of um, a perpetual expectation in us, amen, because of who we serve and who we believe in. And that's why Peter said that, you know, that we have a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection is our guarantee of all the better things that God has in store for you and I. Amen. Go to Romans chapter 15 again, if you would. 
See, all these things come, amen, as we begin to build our hope and prepare ourselves to endure whatever comes our way. Amen. Um, I'm sorry, go to Romans chapter 5. This book, Romans, has a lot to say in it about hope. Matter of fact, Paul is right into a church in Rome that um, we don't generally think about this, about the Romans. But during those days, even Paul as an apostle and all the saints in Jerusalem, they're not free people. Uh, Jerusalem is occupied by Rome. The Romans would let you serve whomever you desired to serve. Matter of fact, they had a place uh, in Rome, a building. It's still there today. Where every god of the nations that they conquered, they would put a statue to that god in that place as a reminder that they overcame them. And Caesar was the chief god. That, and that's why they had to, from time to time, say the term, Caesar is Lord. And when the, the church was birthed and they wouldn't go along with that, and Paul said, no, 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 now every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, that immediately put you at odds with the entirety of the government of Rome. And it began to lead to persecutions against the people of God. He's writing to a people that are not actually free. They have a certain amount of freedoms as long as they don't go against the law of Rome. Now, notice in Romans chapter 5, if you dare say amen, verse 4. He mentions that it's patience and experience and experience works hope. Amen. But if you roll back to verse two, he says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Amen. See, saints, if you want to keep a favorable expectation and hope, you got to go to God to get it. And you got to stay with God to maintain it. Amen. Now, how are you going to do this? You got to know what's written. See, there's no way that you and I can be people who are strong in the word of God, which will make us strong in the hope of God, without knowing what the word of God says to you and I. Amen? This is why we need to read the word of God. Verse 4 in chapter 15, as we read, whatsoever things were written aforetime. Amen. Paul only had the Old Testament. The Old Testament was written, amen, for their learning. And when Paul was in prison, when Paul was in beatings, and when the church, early church was under pressure, it's not like they had a written Bible. See, we take this for granted. Most of us have one. Question is, do we read it? Well, I got a Bible on my phone. Why are you reading the Bible on the phone? Got it on my tablet. See, the Bible says these things were written aforetime for our learning. Amen? The way they really get hope and keep it is going to come through knowing what is written. And this is the context that the apostle is writing in. And the things that are written, you need to get them on the inside of you because it's not like they had Bibles to walk around with like we do today. They had to know on the inside. When, when um, Stephen gave that great testimony before the Jewish leaders before they stoned him. You know, he went back and gave a detailed history of the history of the nation Israel. Amen. And they got angry and they stoned him to death for it. He wasn't reading. He was speaking from what he remembered. See, in that day, it's not like they had it. They would get, they would be taught and taught and taught. Amen. And they had to internalize the word of God. But these things were written aforehand. In these days of peace, we need to be packing ourselves with the word of God. Because, you know, they talk about using AI to rewrite the Bible right now. And, uh, and they say, well, that way we can get it correct. But what if they try and take your Bibles? Well, you need to have it on the inside. Amen. These things are written so we can, in thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So we have the benefit right now before the pressure actually comes to get this script on inside of us so the Holy Ghost can bring to remembrance the things that we've read. And that word will come to us, amen, when we're under pressure and it'll be in us a source of hope, amen. These things were written for our learning that we through patience, say patience, that's endurance, isn't it? Amen. And comfort, amen. 
you know, so when we have these things that are written on the inside of us, they produce in us the ability to endure. Why? Because you can lean back on the promise of God and the word of God as a source of comfort. Say comfort. That word there, paraclete, amen, you know, is the Holy Spirit. You know, he comes alongside. It means one called alongside to help you. Well, see, I won't know what he'll do unless I see what he said he would do in the context of Scripture. Amen? You know, now if you got AAA, amen, you, and you get a flat down the road, you can call them, and that's a comfort in it. Somebody's going to come. Car broke down. You know somebody's going to come, and they're going to tow you to a place of safety. Amen? Well, the Holy Spirit comes alongside us. Amen? Actually, he's the one that comes with strength that comes aside of, this, alongside us to give us strength to live in this life. Through patience and comfort, uh-oh, of the scriptures. So the Holy Spirit is going to take the scriptures, the word of God, amen, and produce in that a hope for you and I. You'll never have strong biblical hope apart from the word of God. And so we need this, amen? Amen. Open thou man eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law. Amen. When we approach the word of God, ask him to open up the scriptures to you. Don't ever tell yourself you don't understand the word. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit, when he has come, the Bible says he'll lead you and guide you into all truth. That's his, one of his primary ministries, isn't it? To open up to you and I the word of God. And so the adversary doesn't want us in the word so he can open up the word to us and produce the hope we need. So we'll start looking at the circumstances, what we hear, what somebody said, what they said this and I heard that. Yeah, but what did God say? See, we need to know what is written so we can have patience and comfort, amen, through the scriptures, amen. And that produces in us a hope. We're talking about how, how to have hope in trying times. So then hope comes. Matter of fact, the apostle's hope, when you think about him, you know, Paul often went around bound in chains. How did this man keep his hope up? Well, one time, just for preaching the gospel, people fasted. They said, we will not eat till this man is dead. All I'm doing is telling them the good news of Jesus Christ. They had to let him down in a basket. He had to escape out of town. Another time, they tried to literally pull him apart. He's beaten, put in stocks, amen, thrown in jail in the book of Acts. And at midnight, he and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. See, he has a hope, doesn't he? He endured all of those things because he had a living hope on the inside. For the hope of Israel at one point, he said, you know, he's in these bonds. To preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen, in spite of what they did uh, to him in his life, amen. You know, he was an unstoppable guy. Matter of fact, because of that hope, think about this for a moment. You know, here he is, he's a, on his way to Rome and um, to testify before Caesar because he made an appeal to Caesar and he's a prisoner. But because he has a hope, you know, most of the people in Rome were slaves. The larger part of the population were enslaved. But something began to happen with this new sect, these believers. You know, usually, you know, they would, you know, you could have average slave, not a happy person. But here are these folk that have a joy about themselves. They have something that the Romans do not have. So much so that when Paul was chained, when they were carrying him, he would be chained to the Roman guards as they traveled. Paul was in a boat and stood up and said, be a good cheer. If you stay in the boat, you'll make it ashore. And they listened to him. See, it was something different about Paul. Matter of fact, because of the expectation he had and the witness he had because he never gave up, he wrote at one point, they of Caesar's household salute thee. He got them converted. How? Because they saw he had a hope that they did not have. They needed it, and a lot of them got saved. This nation was changed because of the witness of that hopeful sect of believers that when they persecuted them, they still loved them. When they hated them, they never gave up on serving God. When they did bad to them, they did good to them. And eventually, they began to change the whole nature of that society. But they kept their hope intact and their expectation by comfort and patience 
of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God empowered them to maintain it. So if we're going to endure, we need a word of God and we need the spirit of God, don't we? Amen. Hallelujah. And that comes through the word of God as we begin to read. Now, notice he says that the God, verse 5, of patience and consolation, that word consolation also is the same word for comfort. The God of all comfort grant you to be like man that one toward, one toward another. Amen. In other words, that expectation on the inside of me. Amen. I love this word. It says the God of consolation grant you to be like man. You know, that ye uh, toward one another. That means the same thing that is in you. You need to encourage that be in others as well. In other words, I can be encouraged so I can now encourage you. Amen. We all need to be of that same man to build and encourage one another and uh, to be like man that one toward another according to Christ Jesus. That you may with one man and one mouth glorify God, even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to keep each other up, don't we? Amen. Now, that means we need to admonish one another. That term means to put in man. Amen. Sometimes we might, might forget where we're headed. Amen. You know, because of the pressures of life, we encourage one another to stay on course, don't we? Amen. Amen. So we see, beloved, then the hope comes through the word of God, through the scriptures. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so if you're not exposed to the word of God, then no wonder our hope can be a little weak. One person put it this way, little exposure to scriptures equal little hope. We need the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why the God of hope. <laughs> wow. He's called the God of hope. Hallelujah. Man. Y'all learn anything? Amen. Let's go back to Romans 15. Spent a lot of time in Romans this morning. Amen. Notice what he says now. We read 4 and 5, and we read 13. Now let's back up to 13. Because now the God of hope, our God is the God of hope, the God of expectation. Amen. God has a favorable expectation of you and I. God believes I can deal with the devil. Amen. 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 That's why when Paul was going in praying in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, amen, concerning the thorn in the flesh, and the Lord told him, my grace is sufficient. Amen. My ability in you, brother, is sufficient to deal with that devil. Amen. See, God gives you and I the ability to do what we need to do with the adversary of our soul. Too many in the church world have been tricked into believing that God's going to deal with the devil. No, he told you to deal with him. Matter of fact, God has graced us to handle him. His grace is sufficient. You know, Paul did get rid of that thorn in the flesh, by the way. And it wasn't a sickness. It was a messenger of Satan sent to buffet him and jealous. It was a devil. The Bible tells you and I to submit to God and resist the devil and he'll stay around us. Oh, he'll flee. Amen. So he has enabled us in him to deal with the, even Satan himself. But we have to believe it and expect that when we submit and begin to resist, now resistance don't me agree with him. It means we begin to battle actively against him using the weapons of our warfare Having it, well, God said, devil, you will flee. And so I'm, my expectation is you got to go. Well, he don't go instantly all the time. He can try you and see if you mean what, what you say. Amen. And the Bible says, whom resists, stay fast in the faith. Don't stop resisting. And he will flee. Now, Paul calls the Lord Jesus. He says, now the God of hope fill you. That word feel, real interesting word when I looked it up. It means to cram you, to pack you with all joy. See, the God of hope wants to build your joy and peace in believing that you may abound or superabound in hope. 
See, God wants us. He's in favor of you and I developing a strong hope. Amen. And we go to the God of hope to fill us with joy and peace so you and I can overflow, abound in hope. In hope, abound in hope, but it's through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. He's coming alongside us to help us to grow in hope. So, Pastor, this is, let me tell you how some ways we can grow in hope. Amen. We won't finish this today, but we got to trust the God of all hope. Amen. Amen. No, it says that the God of hope will fill you with all joy. You know, do we think of God as being joyful? Yeah, he is. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. You know, Jesus had joy. You know, the Bible says that he was anointed with the oil of joy above all his fellows. In other words, the anointing of joy was in his life. Amen. Jesus had an expectation favorably. You know, he would tell the the disciples that after his death, he'll meet them in Jerusalem. See, that was an expectation, wasn't it? Well, he's the same one that grants us an expectation through faith. He graces us with that life, living hope by the resurrection. I can believe things will get better. Amen. Now, I got to get this man right. Amen. I got to get my sight right. I can't live by what I see. We got to live by what we believe. See, that means then that you and I need to believe this word more than we believe what we see with our eyes. Amen. If God said it, that issue is settled. I expect God to do even as he has said he would do. And so I have an expectation that God will move, if need be, heaven and earth for you and I, his people. Amen. Amen. So he's going to fill us with all joy. And without joy, you're not going to have strength. But along with that, Jesus said, my joy give I you, not as the world give it. Not talking about a happy feeling. The joy of the Lord is a spiritual force. Matter of fact, it's one of the fruit of the spirit of God at work on the inside of us. Amen. We begin to read about, you know, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy. Oh, joy is the fruit of the spirit. So, so a bad pro- product of me abiding in Christ, joy. Amen. Based on an expectation so I can rejoice. And that's why Paul says you and I should rejoice in tribulations. Because we know something. We'll read that in a little bit. Amen. But he'll give us all joy and peace in believing. See, we have to believe, don't we? It's not over for me yet. Amen. I believe God is carrying me through this. Amen. Matter of fact, Micah 6, 80 says, rejoice not over me. Amen. Though I fall and I shall arise. Amen. Just because I fail don't mean I'm going to stay down. I'm getting up. See, I expect to win. Amen. Proverbs said a man may fall seven times, but each time he gets back up. See, a person with an expectation don't throw in the towel. You keep coming. Amen. You're going to wear down the adversary. Jesus said, now hear the unjust judge. I'm just just a man, this woman wearing me out, amen, by her continual coming. Don't stop pursuing God. Don't stop going going after what God has for us. We can wear it. We can outlast the devil. But we have to have an expectation that we can do it, amen. So resistance is not a one-time act. It's a stance you and I take until that opposition moves. And the joy of the Lord is undergirding us so that we don't despair in the middle of it. Amen. And so we can be oppressed, but the Bible says not forsaken. See, when we know what's written, a lot of people get under pressure. So where is God? He didn't go anywhere. He's with you in it. So you can be oppressed, but not forsaken. Amen. Cast down and not be destroyed because you know some things from what has been written. And you trust what God said to carry you through. You have to go to the God of hope. Amen. Because God is characterized by hope. Expect God to hear your cry. Psalms 38 verse 5 says, For in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Thou wilt hear. Well, well I pray it seems like my prayers don't go above my, 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 my nose. No, you're not praying in faith. 
I don't have to see a result when I pray in faith. I trust God. Amen. Amen. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope thou would hear, O Lord, my God. So you have to pray. That's an expectation, isn't it? Amen. Amen. The woman with the issue of blood, she had faith that when she laid, laid her hands on, when she grabbed hold of the garment of the Lord Jesus, she could be healed. But along with it, she had to have an expectation for she said within herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. If she had no expectation of healing of a favorable outcome through her action, she never would have came in the press behind. Hope is a sustaining force. Amen. Hope will drive you toward him and to receive what God has promised. Y'all see what pastor saying. So faith and hope work together in her. Amen. And she was going, won't do no good. I done spent all my money, 12 years, all these doctors, and they did nothing. I hear about Jesus, but, you know, I already wasted everything I got. What good would it make? See, that would have been no hope. And she never would have got in the press. And she would have been, well, if it's the Lord's will to heal me, let him come by my way. No, she said, I'm going to him. Amen. See, that was hope that propelled that action, wasn't it? A favor, if I can but touch. Somebody said touch. Amen. The hem of his garments, I shall be made whole. See, hope led her. It propelled her to go. Amen. So we have to have that type of a hope so you and I don't give up. Amen. Don't give up on God because things aren't going well. Amen. No, we need to press into him. Amen. Because it'll be even as he has told us it would be if we'll stay the course in Jesus' name. We got to stay expected. Amen. Psalms 42, 5 says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Hope thou in God. See, we got to keep going to the God of hope. He refreshes us by the power of the Spirit of God. And, and in closing, amen, for sake of time, let me wrap up. And now, there's an end result of hope as well. Amen. And, and for that, let's go back to Romans chapter 5 again. Amen. Because hope has an end. Amen. And notice in verse 2. Two, he says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Amen. And see, if you have a hope that God, God's going to reveal his glory, you can rejoice in advance of receive, receiving. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Wait a minute. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, and not only so, but we glory or exalt, we make a big deal of rejoicing in tribulations. We rejoice in tilipsis, amen, pressure. Now, the word tribulation here is plural. And then he says also that tribulation singular works something out on the inside of us. So you got to know this to keep hope up, your expectation when you're being pressed. Now, tribulations there, that Greek word telepsis, is pressure external, but it's coming not from just above to press down, it's coming from all around. Anybody ever felt that kind of pressure? Amen, yeah. Where, you know, you're pressed in body, you're pressed in man, you know. You're pressed by emotions. There are things going uh, uh, wrong in different relations. There's pressure at work, you know, pressure from society, amen. All the things, you know, just pressure from all around seeking. You know what I think about when I think about that? You know, when you ever seen them like when they compress boxes, you know, to you take your, your cardboard and you throw it in the, in, in the paper section and then they flip the switch and all that paper is compacted down. That's telepsis. It's to compress it and mold it into a shape that they can handle. That's what the pressures of this world are designed to do. To come from around, from underneath, and from above. To press you and I into a mold the world can just run its way with. So we'll be just as down as day, just as fearful as day, just as hopeless as day, just as conforming as day. That, that's why so many churches are conforming to wokeism. That's why so, the pressure, that's why so many churches are uh, giving in to the pressure, the external pressure of the LGBT. 
That's why they're so giving in to the pressure of what a man or a woman is. Why? Because their pressure is daily bombarding. If you don't do this, you're going to be shut down. You're going to be canceled. You're going to be cast aside. You're going to be cut off. And because of the pressure, many are giving up and getting off the word of God. But when we have the hope of God through the scripture of God and the patience of God, undergirded by the word of God, we're going to rejoice in that because we know something. Amen. We know, amen, that the trying of our faith is going to work in us endurance and patience, amen. See, it's based on what we know that keeps us joyful and that keeps us hopeful, amen. So we glory in the pressure, amen. We're not going to get down and out, bent out of shape, give up, throw in the towel, and quit and stop serving God. We're going to continue to serve him, irregardless of the pressure from out there, amen. This is how we grow in this thing, because we know that tribulation work at patience. Amen. That word work is energy. It energizes us, builds in us endurance. Amen. And endurance brings experience. I've been through this before. This is my first rodeo. <laughs> I've had the enemy come at me like this. I need to call to remembrance what I did to get over then and then apply what I learned through that to this. Amen. And then that produces Hope. See how the, those things come together? Amen. See, as you grow in Jesus, amen, those things, even the failures in your life, you learn. You should get some experience out of that. So now you got me that time, but you won't get me the next time. Because guess what? That devil's going to try the same thing that tripped me before. He's going to bring it up again. Amen. Well, now I got experience. I know how now to, I can anticipate your move and I can counteract your move. And now I got experience and that experience gives me hope. You won't get me this time. Amen. See, that expectation is growing because now I got a little experience under my belt. Amen. And then that experience produces hope and hope make it not ashamed. Because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts. Amen. Praise God. By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. No, we're not going down. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, but he's produced in us hope. And we've got access. And so we can rejoice. Praise God. <laughs> amen. We're going. Amen. We're keeping our hope strong in Jesus' name. Amen. And so the hope that the end result then is to give us hope in Trantan. Y'all see that in the word? Hallelujah. So we glory in those things. Amen. You know, during the Spanish Inquisition, amen, um, there was a book called, um, you know, the it, was, it was about the testimonies of um, Christians. Uh, we know that this Bible that we often take for granted, um, we heard about Wycliffe translators and different translators of the word of God. Well, this word of God came at great expense. Amen. Because uh, Spain, the Spanish Inquisition during that time, they they burn him at the stake. Why did they burn a Bible translator at the stake, Pastor? Well, because he took the word of God that was in Latin and he put it in English so that the common man could read it. And they knew that if people could read this word and internalize this word, they couldn't keep them in bondage. That's why uh, every nation that seeks to subjugate people, first thing they come after is the Bible. That's why they're talking about coming at your Bible now and wanting to rewrite it. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, and this is a spirit word he's given us, amen, uh, there's liberty. Amen. Freedom. And if he can get us away from the word of God, bondage. Well, they, these two young brothers, amen, got a hold of the Wycliffe translation and they were preaching from it. And they called them. They said, look, we're going to burn y'all. We're going to put y'all in a cage and burn you at the stake if you don't stop preaching the word of God. Well, they put both of them in a cage. And uh, one of them, the older brother, kept on preaching. They cut his tongue out. Now, his younger brother wasn't as bold as he was. He wasn't as vocal as he was. He saw this happening. He was in a cage. And he wasn't saying much of anything. But his other, other brother, he admonished him. He reminded him that his life did not consist of what he experienced right here. You see, this is where our hope can carry us through even persecution. And he said, when they burned me, they were going to burn him at the stake. They came, they took him, they began to burn him at the stake. And he told his young brother, I'll give you a sign to let you, you know how it goes if I can endure this. You know, when people go through that type of martyrdom, God graces them to endure it. 
He couldn't wave because his hands were behind him. He's tied to a stake. We don't know exactly how he's signaling. Him. Maybe it was a nod or something like that. And it encouraged the other brother that wasn't preaching to begin to preach from his cage. They didn't even wait to cut his tongue out. They took him right down. Hundreds were gathering to hear them preach the word of God. And they put him in. And this young brother that was afraid through the grace of God and the hope of where he was going. See, he understood, I'm going through this to get where Jesus is. God graced him to do it. He preached as the flames consumed him. And hundreds got right with God. Amen. What kept him? A hope. Amen. A hope that went beyond the pain of flame to preach as you are being consumed. See, God can keep you and I no matter where we find ourselves. We don't go through this type of pressure that they experienced. Amen. If you ever want to read Fox's book of martyrs, man, that's a good read for you. Amen. What people endure to get you this word and how God can keep you in the middle of hard times. Amen. But we're not enduring that. So we ought to have be most hopeful. And thankful to God that we don't experience that. But if we did, God could grace us to endure it. Amen. What did God do with them through that? He anchored their soul. I got to close. Got to close. We'll, we'll pick this up next week. But go to Hebrews chapter 6. See, this hope is stronger than just, you know, our experiences and what we feel. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 says that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope. You got to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. Notice the term fled for refuge. In Joshua 20, there were cities of refuge that God set in the, in the, in the land that if you had committed a crime or murder or if the destroyer was after you, somebody wanted take vengeance on you. You could get to the city of hope and they could not come in and get you. That's in Joshua 20. That city of hope and refuge was a type of Jesus. He said that we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. What hope? Which hope we have as an anchor for the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enter into that which is behind the veil. Amen. Jesus is our anchor of hope. And so we've got to get anchored in Christ and in his word and his promises so you and I have a strong hope. Jesus is our city of refuge. Amen. You know, we sing that. Where would I go when there's no one else to run to? I run to the rock. See, that's the city of refuge. So that the avenger can't get you. Amen. There's a place in Christ where he keeps us surrounded, sheltered in him. And this word anchor, I'll tell you next week. Amen. But we got to lay hold on that ark of safety. Amen. Safest place you and I can be is anchored in Christ. Hallelujah. Safest place in America is that NORAD facility where they got this bunker in the mountains to supply, that could withstand any nuclear blast. But the safest place in the universe is to be anchored in Christ. Amen. Got to lay hold of that safety that is in him in Jesus name. And so what do we do when we get pressed? We run to our city of refuge. We run to Jesus. Sometimes pressure we feel like drives us away. It should drive us to him. Amen. The thought there with that is that, you know, when you guys say, you know, the Lord is taking us to heaven. But back during the times when this was written, the way that they would get a boat into a safe harbor if it was a big boat, same as we do it today, they had a little tugboat. But the tugboat was powered by, they call them a drum, drumeters, you know, human slaves. They would actually row that boat in the storm to pull that ship to safety. Small boat, you know, it was a man that would take the rope and swim so that he could get it to shore and then they could reel that boat in to get it out of the storm. That's the thought that ca is carries there. When we're anchored in Jesus, you know, God's on the other end. You're going to be with him. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. You know, 
And he has you, and he's pulling you in. But you got to stay anchored. you got to stay attached. Amen? Everything is out to get you break, to break away that fellowship, your walk with him. you got to stay attached to Jesus if you're going to keep strong hope. Let's bow our hearts and pray. Amen. Father God, in Jesus' name, we look to you. Lord, you're our source of hope. Lord God, you're the keeper of our soul, sustainer of our lives. And God, we just pray that you would grace us, God, that no matter the challenge, no matter the pressure, no matter what comes our way, God, that as we remain anchored in you, you're able to bring us safely to shore in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we take courage today. God, that through the patience and comfort of your scriptures, God, that we would have hope. So, God, I pray, God, that you would refresh in it among us today, Lord, that is experiencing, Lord, uh, just a, a de deficit in the area of hope, Lord, just feeling overwhelmed and overcome and beat down. Wherever head is bowed right now, if anyone is in that predicament, just raise your hands as we pray in the name of Jesus, God, that the grace of God and refreshing from on high will come our way in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you would refresh us, your people. God, that we might rejoice in tribulation, God, because we know that as our faith is tried, it's working in us, Lord. What the enemy sought to destroy us with, you, by your grace, is building a hope and a strength on the inside of us. So, God, we yield ourselves to you now, God, and we pray that by your grace, you would work in us even more to both to will and to do your good pleasure. God, I pray that you will strengthen every heart, God. That in a head that might be hung down, God, that you would lift it up. And I pray, God, for refreshing from on high to invigorate us all in Jesus' name and strengthen us for the days ahead in Jesus' name. God, build in us a sustaining hope, a keeping hope, a hope that cannot be crushed in the name of Jesus. And for it, God, we give you the praise, the thanks, and all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Amen.